I was very fortunate in the early 70s uh, to be living in a house with uh, a bunch of actors and musicians. In fact, it was an extraordinary house with um, where, where all sorts of uh, tricks and theatre antics were played out every single day. And there was one room that was a music room. And basically I just started sitting on the drum kit and started playing. There was a drummer there uh, who lived in that house as well, a guy called Lindsay Arnold. And he kind of taught me quite a bit and had a big influence on me, but it was really the house. It was one of those classic share houses. We were very bohemian. Uh, it really had an influence on me to become a, a creative person. I went overseas for a couple of years before returning to Brisbane uh, when I did a couple more years of acting. And I did that for a couple of years before really settling into drums and probably settling into drums because of the political movements in Brisbane at the time due to the oppression of the Bjelke Peterson government and punk music being such a significant political move, artistic move, movement, it really affected me. And uh, I just went, oh my God, I want to do something that's significant. Jenny um, was working in those little squares she was working and you can see it in the portraits. So she, in fact, the sitting was to take Polaroid photos. That's how she did it. So she just, you know, sat me down um, and, and took quite a few Polaroid photos. And then she worked out a grid system on the photo, around the photo to paint that. All three portraits were incredible. And we used the portraits on our first album uh, cover, Send Me a Lullaby. It was just incredible luck that we got, got, well, it wasn't so much luck because Jenny and John lived in the same apartment block in Spring Hill that Grant McLennan lived in. So, um, and it was just around the corner from where Robert and I lived in Spring Hill. So it wasn't such a big shock, but, or, or unusual, but we were so lucky because those portraits are just so brilliant. You know those portraits, she, 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 she was selling those portraits. This is just an extraordinary story for 50 bucks. And, you know, we were so poor. I, I can't tell you, we had no money, you know. And I really wanted to buy that portrait, you know. And I, you know, I mentioned it to my family, but, you know, they, they had no conception at all. But in the end, the person she's a partner with who's an architect, he bought the portraits. Uh, but I'd always been tracking them. I'd been what I wanted to know where they were. I was, you know, I mean, and also they, they would have been split up, which would have been another kind of weird thing if Andrew hadn't bought them. I think I've got that story right. I mean, I've never checked that story, but I'm pretty sure that story is right. The colours are really great. You know, I mean, I can't wait to see it again today. It, it's been a long time since I've seen them. And I look so um, serious and so punk, you know, and I was, I was like that. Look at that. Gee, they're in good nick. God, they've really weathered well. Shit. 